tried NetGalley for the first time as an author and do I have a story for you about my experience which was kind of painful. There was some good, there was some bad, and there was some ugly. Let's put it that way. But first I should probably explain what NetGalley actually is and then also how I was able to get onto NetGalley as an author, being that I'm an indie author aka independent or self-published author, when typically NetGalley is a very traditionally published author space or more of the publishing houses actually use that, not even the authors themselves. It's usually very trad pub and I found a really cool way to actually get on NetGalley for a very good deal, not hundreds of dollars, only $50, but we'll get into all of that in a second. And then also I want to share, like I said, my full story, nothing held back. But first, again, let's start with what exactly is NetGalley? Because if you don't know, you're probably a little confused at this point. My husband was like, what the heck is that? And I was trying to explain it's where books are put up by, again, publishing houses or authors, if you're an indie author, and then readers who are interested in reading an advanced review copy in exchange for an honest review can apply to receive your book for free. And then again, like I said, the idea, it doesn't always happen, but the goal in theory, they are promising that they're going to leave you an honest review. And again, just to be really specific, it's not just supposed to be on NetGalley, although they do typically leave them there the most. It's also supposed to translate over to other websites, depending on what they put their preferences are, such as very often Goodreads, because that's before release, but also Amazon is a big one. And so that kind of already gave you a hint at why authors and publishers want to have their books on NetGalley. The whole reason is to get reviews for the book before the book is released and sometimes after as well because that also brings exposure and that helps you with promotional things such as using those reviews to share why other readers should consider maybe pre-ordering the book or if it's already released to order a copy and read it and then to use those reviews for promotional purposes such as sharing that review I don't know on social media or the website or whatever or snippets of it to show why other readers might be interested in reading the book as well. A couple things to know before we get any deeper. There's a few standard things that are typically done on NetGalley. It's typically used for pre-orders for books that are about to release. Although I have found out that often books will go past the release date as well. And we'll get into that. That was my experience, but it can also be used technically after a book is already out as well. If you're like, you know what? My book's been out for a while, but I'm not getting a lot of traction. I would just like to get some reviews. You could technically use it anytime. I would recommend based on my experience as well as what I was taught by some people who are authorities on NetGalley for authors, and I'll get into that in a second, how I know this, but I was taught that the very best is to kind of go right up in that month before release to maybe a month after, but depending on what you want, it can actually work really well to do kind of two weeks before and two weeks after, which is what was recommended to me and what I tried in my experience. And as I share more in a minute, you'll kind of understand more what might work for you if you wanted to try it but I would say going too far before the book release would probably make the readers more likely to forget to come back and review, which is kind of the whole point. So I wouldn't go too far back before the release. And I also personally wouldn't go after the release very far either, because at that point I want people to buy it. If I'm doing my job well as a marketer, hopefully I've gotten enough reviews to get a baseline and that's enough and I don't want to keep giving away the book for free. So that's just my personal take on when would be a good time to use NetGalley. But then also let's talk about how I was able to use it as an indie author. Typically NetGalley is a few hundred dollars and that is a really, really steep investment if you're not sure it's going to work, if you're not sure you're even going to like it, if you don't know what you're doing, and especially if you're a debut author and probably have spent quite a bit of money on your book already. Actually, any book, but that's a different topic. So like, coming back to the point, I was able to get on NetGalley for only $50 by joining what's called a co-op. A co-op is just a fancy word for a bunch of authors coming together to collaborate and pay that one massive fee all together so that it's cheaper per person than if you were to do this all by yourself. So I joined Victory Editing, which is according to Anne, the creator of Victory Editing, the first NetGalley co-op that was ever created. But there are other co-ops out there and you can do your research and look them up, but I will link Victory Editing below if you're interested. I had a great experience working with Anne on the professionalism side. Everything was awesome. I'm more gonna talk about my experience emotionally <laughs> as an author on NetGalley, because it was, it was something else. Let me tell you. But to wrap up the how portion, I did work with this co-op and it was $50 for a one month slot, which I think is more than enough to get a good amount of reviews for your book. Before I get 
too far in my initial reactions, let me quick give you a tour of the NetGalley dashboard because I did have access on the publisher side and I had a reader account in the past, but that looks different than the publisher account. So when you go through a co-op, at least with Victory Editing, we actually had the login info from Victory Editing and there were certain things that you're not allowed to touch that only they are allowed to touch. But then when it comes to your book, there are tons of little cool features that you can play with. You can look at your stats anytime you want. So let me show you, give you a little quick tour of the dashboard. When I first got set up, they had put in a lot of my title details, but they had me go and confirm them and add my description of the book here. And then I also was able to add any notes or advanced praise, which I did add that just for fun. And then I added some of my links in there. So I was able to kind of personalize the book a little bit more under the title details and the upload files section here. So you can play with the title information, add more content if you want to. And then over here we have under availability, there were some other stats that you can't see anymore. You'll see that when we go back to the screenshots. There's a settings section where I can just kind of clarify things. I didn't really touch that. And then there is the request section right here, which I used a lot. So once I decided to approve requests, that's where I had to come and do that right here. I would see there's a pending request. I would go approve it. And then probably the button I used the most was this feedback one right here, where you can see that you can click and actually get a little bit more specific access to the feedback that members were giving once they finished reading your book. And I'll go into that dashboard more at the end, but let's go back to my initial reactions. Let's talk about my experience using that galley as an author and the full scope of everything that happened within that month. It was a roller coaster ride of emotions and I took a lot of screenshots throughout the month, but let's first start with past Bethany who had no idea what she was getting into and share my live reactions at the time. I put my book on NetGalley on November 17th. I took a screenshot of NetGalley day one <laughs> at the end of the day. There had been 104 impressions, 23 people had clicked to read, and I'm not sure why there was a discrepancy, but it said 14 had access. So I think it like takes a while for the access to happen. I don't know. And when I clicked into the categories, it was like the first book in the category. It was all shiny and new. It was like, boom, somebody clicked to read almost right away in the first hour. And then it just kept coming. Another one, another one. It's so cool on the back end. You can see things like the reasons for requests. So like the main reason was kind of going back and forth between like cover and blurb, cover and blurb. I started waiting for the reviews to come in and I was like, well, it's a fast read, but I don't know how you know much time people have. So the next day I'm like, anything? No. The next day, anything? No. The fourth day, I got my first review and I took a screenshot. So it says I had at this point 665 impressions and 111 people had clicked to read. So like, what is that? One out of six, I think. Is that good math? I don't know. I thought, okay, a lot of people are getting excited to read it. I hope they'll actually like it. I had my book and I still have it set to um, anybody can grab it. And I was going to eventually switch it to, I had to approve people, but I just, I guess I was worried that like nobody would even want it. So I was like, anybody, I will take anybody, like please. And the more people, the better is how I was feeling. So today is Thursday, November 24th, Thanksgiving in the US. And I think it's day seven today. So I took a screenshot of this, but I have 1,095 impressions, 185 people have clicked read and eight feedback slash review. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know if it's just like star rating as feedback and then review is like more than that. I'm not sure. But at this point, it looks like 140 people have access. So not everybody who clicked to read actually got it. I don't know, but most people did, I think. So like, I'm trying to read this, right? And I'm just guessing. So impressions, I think just means like they literally, maybe they were scrolling past it and like visually it was on screen. So that counts as an impression. I'm pretty sure about that. And then click to read means all the people who actually like stopped and were like, yeah, I want, I want to read this. 185 people. And then down here on activity, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, it says 140 people actually have access. So out of those 185 people who clicked on it, 140 of them were like, yeah, I want it. But coming back to the reviews, because at the top here, I can click on the reviews tab and actually like see them in full. So my very first review <sighs> confused the heck out of me because it seemed very positive. A little tale about trust and friendships and how to find yourself. Villains really are born, not born, but made. I'm interested to know what will happen next and glad this was a quick and good read. But then it's three stars. So, okay, for me, it's been so long since I've actually like rated books. Like for me as an author, I try not to be like a book reviewer as well. It feels like a little bit of a crossing boundaries. I don't know. So I 
pretty much either give things five stars or no stars. I just, I'm like, eh, whatever. So I don't really know what to think of three star reviews, but I know from like other people telling me that on NetGalley's and Goodreads, that's considered good. But in my mind, it's considered almost like I hated the book. So <laughs> just being real with you guys, like that's just how I've always seen a three star review. It's like, hey, if I liked it, I liked it. Like I'm gonna give it all the stars, you know? <laughs> and if I loved it, it's getting five stars. I was confused to say the least because like three stars to me says I hated it, but then the review said they liked it. And I was like, I don't know how to take this. <laughs> Another three star review came in. Uh, they were critical, but again, they said they liked it. So I was like, okay, I still don't know how to take this. And then the third review came in three stars again. Good world building and an interesting magic system, but ultimately not for me. So I remember talking to my friends about this where I was like, hey, I'm getting like good reviews, but it's like not their favorite, but like they liked it, but like they are giving it three stars. And so my friend Mandy was like, she's like, you probably shouldn't have opened it up to just anybody because you probably got people who are just looking for any free book whatsoever, even if it's not in the genre they typically read in, instead of like tailoring your NetGalley experience to the people who love your books. <laughs> So at this point, like it's been open for so long, I'm like, what do I do? Does it even matter anymore? <laughs> like, do I close it down? I don't know, I'm still thinking on it. The fourth review came in. At this point, I was still like, oh, what did they say? Like, I wanna know. And again, three stars. But this is the funny thing. And this again, it has been blowing my mind because this review right here, I should like highlight it if I can find it. I disliked the world building. Okay, I just took a screenshot, but then the previous one right here, the book had good world building. What? I don't I don't know what to do with that. I don't I don't know what to do. Like does it or doesn't it? Like and then I got my first four star review and I was so excited and so happy. I'm gonna screenshot it because I was very proud of this review, very thankful for it. I'm like this, you are my target audience. You are the person that I'm writing this book for. But then right after that I got my first two star review. <laughs> I like literally I feel like I've been on this roller coaster of emotions and I'm regretting putting in my email in the section where it's like do you want to get an alert every time you get a review because I'm like just checking my email boom there's a review two stars. The thing that really bummed me out is it was from a librarian and I was like the first line says the secret gift was an okay read. <laughs> so you're telling me for an okay read that wasn't that bad you gave it two stars. I'm over here like trying to shift and sort in my brain what star ratings mean, but the truth is it's different for every single person, including myself. I'm just almost trying to like disregard them and look at the reviews more because yet again, after that, another three star review. And again, this one was really glowing. It said the premise was really unique and exciting. Who doesn't love a fairy tale retelling? It was definitely fun to read. World building was done masterfully. So that's, I guess, two to one. I don't know if I'm like, just gonna like tally it up on both sides and see where it lands. <laughs> Cause I just, I'm like, how do I know if I'm good or not? Like I'm legit hinging way too much on these people's opinions. And I need to like step back and remember that reviews are for readers. <sighs> and and that sometimes I can't, first of all, I can't do anything anymore because the book is about to be published. But secondly, I'm such a people pleaser. I just, I want to make the book something everyone loves. And so if one person loves the world building and the other person doesn't, that people pleaser in me is like broken. I'm like swinging back and forth. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Like, should I fix it or should I not fix it? What should I do? I'm just, Literally, it's messing with my mind <laughs> right now. And this is the last review that I'll share today. I have, like I said, eight so far. So this is another four star review. Thank you so much. You are my person. I really appreciate you. And it says, The Secret Gift by Bethany Atazada is sure to captivate readers with the interesting villain origin story. And then further down, I just wanna point this out because again, it's messing with my mind. It says, the world building was really solid in this book. <laughs> Thank you. We can't please everyone, no matter what we do, no matter how badly we want to. I really, really want everyone to like my story, but we can't necessarily please everyone because what one person likes, another person hates. And that, I think my biggest issue is that I've been taking that very personally, but it's not personal. It's just their preferences and they're not trying to make it personal. They're not trying to, you know, make me feel bad about my story. They're just being honest. I think I really need to get back to the mindset of I wrote this book for me and I wrote it the way that I knew I wanted the character to be. And if one person thinks it's a little too 
you know, quick into villainy and another person thinks it's not far enough, I have to remember what I think, which is that I wrote it exactly how I wanted it to be. I don't want her to become a full villain yet because we have two more books to go. And I know exactly what those books are gonna have and it's going to be a descent. Like we are gonna have a little like possibly hopeful moments and then it's like, nope. Yeah, we know where Jezebel is going because of the Stolen Kingdom series and where she is in that series, but that is what did I say? It's centuries later is how I think I put it. So like we got time. <laughs> People don't become bad all in one day or even one week or year. I just discovered you can also feature a review by clicking the little plus sign here. So I featured my two four star reviews and I believe they come up on my book's homepage. Yeah. <sighs> okay, I've rambled enough. I'll let you know how it goes. I wanted to give you guys a quick net galley update. It is December 3rd today, so two days until release. And I can honestly say I have not been this bummed out about a release since like ever like ever. So let me back up. The reviews on Net Galley, uh, first of all, not that many have come in yet, and it's been, has it been two weeks? I asked like when I should do the Net Galley, and they recommended overlapping release so that the book would be fresh and reviewers could just go straight to Amazon and upload their review after the book came out. So I don't want to promote it to my audience because I want my audience to buy the book, right? Well, I guess I could because I took the book off of the auto approve and I made it so I have to approve people so I could just stop approving people on release day, I guess. I don't know, my goal was to reach a brand new audience to reach more people, but I was talking to some of my friends about this because the reviews are just not adding up to what my regular audience feels. It feels like two different books. My ARC readers that I have cultivated and my audience who's read pieces of the book and my newsletter subscribers who've read pieces of the book, everybody who has been a fan of my books for a long time and has been exposed to this book loves it. But the Net Galley people are very eh about it. Like, I could take it or leave it. And so I was talking to my friends. I was like, what's going on? This is not matching up and it's really bumming me out. And they pointed out that I had had the book on that kind of auto approve setting where I, cause I was just like, I want as many people as possible to read it, right? Well, they're like, well, people who are just looking to get a free book probably downloaded it, even if it wasn't the genre they normally read, even if it wasn't the genre they normally like, even if they will probably hate your book. They might have still downloaded it. On top of that, people who are just on there to get a free book looking for the auto approves and maybe don't plan to review, that might be why I'm not getting as many reviews as some of the other books that I've seen on Ekeli. So all around, I regret putting it on that auto approve and I wish I'd just been more picky with who I allowed to get the book. Not that I've been denying a lot of people. I think I've only said no to like six people. So it's not like I've said no to a lot, but yeah, it's just, it's really bumming me out. So I want to tell you guys my honest feelings and how I'm just kind of disappointed. I don't know if it's going to turn around. I'm curious what it'll look like on release day. That's all I got for now. I just wanted to give you a real time update. I'm really not loving it at all. <laughs> All right, it is now the first week of January, January 8th. So it's been like three or four weeks. I've had time to kind of compile my thoughts and my feelings and kind of sit on it, process. And I feel like I'm ready to share what I do now, Kelly, again. And also some things I would do differently if I could go back into the past. And then also as I give you kind of a tour of the stats side of the dashboard, I will explain some things that I liked and I didn't like so much. The ugly side that I hinted at, we'll get into that. So let's go ahead and go to my dashboard. All right, so you remember this from earlier in the video. This is just the initial book page, but if you scroll down to the feedback section right here and click this, you're gonna get to your stats page. So these are my final stats. Let's go over it really quick. First, we have impressions. So during the entire month that I was on NetGalley, I had 1,830 people uh, scroll by my book or see it on the page in some way, shape, or form. It could have been for a split second as they scrolled through the genre. It could have been they actually sat and looked at it. But just an impression is just literally their eyeballs were on it even if it was just for a second and they weren't really paying attention to it, it was on the screen. Next, we have 273 people clicked to read. That's a lot of people. But before we get too excited about that, let me scroll down here to this activity section because it says right here, 201 members with access. So out of those 273 people, not all of them actually 
got the book. I'm still a little fuzzy on that, but I'm thinking that that means that some of them weren't able to download it. I'm not sure. I wish I could ask Matt Galley, but I don't know the answer to that. But this is the more accurate number right here. 201 people actually downloaded the book and have access to read it. Did they actually read it though? I don't think all of them did, honestly, because when you look at the percentage of people who actually came and left feedback right up here, 30 people total left feedback in a month. That's like one person a day, pretty much. That's way less than 200. <laughs> so I talked about this a little bit back in my reactions, but I did have my book set to literally anybody could download it and I didn't have to approve. And I think that was a big mistake. And honestly, Victory Editing advised me not to do this. And I am so sorry that I didn't listen. It's my fault completely. And I found that the people who loved my genre, this is kind of jumping ahead, but there were people who were like, I love the world building. This is so perfect. It's exactly what I was looking for. They were my target audience, the people that I actually know would love my book. And then there were people outside of my audience who were like, this world building sucks. This reads like a textbook. I think that was my favorite review. And by favorite, I mean least favorite. Um, we'll get into that more in a second. Let me finish with the stats. So out of that feedback, there were only actually 28 actual reviews, like the in writing stuff. And then out of that, 22 of those NetGalley users decided to actually go and share the reviews on socials somewhere. Then scrolling down, I kind of touched on this activity section, but when I started declining people, I still approved most people. There were some people that I declined where I was like, I can tell that you're not going to like my book and I'm so sorry, but I can tell. Or there were a few people who are like, they clearly are just getting free books and they're not actually reviewing. So when you see that on NetGalley, I was actually still approving most everybody, but then I heard that publishing houses typically only approve if they have was it 80%? That seems really high, but I think it was like an 80% review rate. And if you don't meet that, you don't get a book. I pretty much approved everybody. So like you can see here, there were only 18 people declined and it uh, looks like one person withdrew. 54 people gave my cover a thumbs up and said they really liked it. Then there was this cool poll feature, which I loved because it kind of gave me a little more insight. There's like 50 other books in this co-op at any given time. So I kind of scoped them out out of curiosity. And I noticed that these polls pretty much were always the same. It was usually minimal for the author, about 10%. Mine's that 11% knew about me and picked it because of me. 29% picked this book to read because of the cover and were very excited about that. The majority, 34%, were all about this book because they read the description, which makes me happy. It makes me know that my blurb was good. I actually changed the blurb halfway through this process and it had a good rating, but it did go up a little bit even more after that. And then we have 6% put, I keep hearing about this book. So it's not very common for an indie author to be hugely publicized. It's not like a Sarah J Moss book and everyone's like, yeah, I keep hearing about this book. I want it. And then last but not least is book title got actually 20%. So that made me really happy to know that the title's also intriguing. And then our average over here on the star side, it says the average rating was 3.3 stars. So just like right smack dab in the middle. Two members gave it five stars, nine gave it four stars, 12 gave it three stars, two people gave it four stars and nobody gave it one star. And there's also this cool little opinions tab at the bottom here where it said 59% were interested in me, the author, like for interviews and events, which I don't think they had to answer this because not every, it didn't always change after review, but I think some people obviously must have. 68% would purchase this book for themselves or a friend. 74% would recommend this book or author to their audience. And then at the top here, you can also see that from these opinions, 23 of them were reviewers, but I also had three librarians, one educator, and one bookseller. And let me just really quick pause because I might forget to say this later in the video if I don't say it now. The really sad thing that I knew about, but it just, it didn't click until it was too late, is that when you're on the NetGalley co-op and probably at any time when you're on NetGalley, they do close the book. They stop letting you approve people before it's actually off NetGalley. So on like, let's see, what was seven days before? I think it was like December 10th, I think. I could no longer approve people, but I had the book on NetGalley all the way till the 17th. And that didn't make sense to me. That was frustrating. I felt like I didn't really get my full month's worth. I only got really three weeks worth of time on NetGalley. You know what I mean? Because I couldn't approve anybody else. And there were requests still coming in. There was like a bookseller and I really, really wanted to approve them. There was somebody from a media outlet and I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I could approve you. I wish I could. I'm so sorry. But I couldn't. I And I just had to watch these review requests come in and I couldn't touch them. It just got grayed out and I had no more access unless I wanted to buy another month. But I do not think that was Victory Editing's fault. I think that's a NetGalley thing. And so just be aware because I wasn't and I was really 
bummed out when I was like, shoot, I really wish I would have like come on the very last day. I didn't know that my deadline was approaching and so I missed out on some people that way. Coming back to the final thoughts, would I do it again? <laughs> Would I do it again? I think I would because $50 is actually not that much to pay for potentially 30 reviews like you saw in that last stat. Now, did all those people go over and review on Amazon? I don't think so. I think a lot of them reviewed on Goodreads, so it definitely went up a lot on Goodreads. Although downside to that is that I didn't have my target readers all the time, so some of those reviews were not good. And oh my gosh, I forgot to talk about the feeling side. We'll talk about that at the end. After I get through these kind of final thoughts, we'll talk about my emotional roller coaster experience. So for would I do it again, I put not for a sequel, it would have to be for a book one or a standalone, but I think we kind of talked about that at the beginning. I think I would do it again for the sake of reviews, especially if I was a brand new author and I didn't have a review team. Now the thing is I do have a review team who are amazing. So when I look at my reviews on Amazon, yes, they do seem to be really good already. A month after release, I had 36 reviews. That's awesome. However, when I look at those reviews, I do think that a lot of them came from my my personal arc review team and my amazing readers who actually love my stories and bought the book and then reviewed it because I asked them to. Like I have built up you guys the best, I have the most amazing readers and the best arc team built up and so I just don't know. I can probably do this organically for free if I put in the time because I have grown my audience. I put in what is it five, six? almost six years now. I do think NetGalley would be almost more valuable for a brand new debut author, actually, because it would allow you to, as long as your book was really good, which we're gonna talk about this in a second, because you really have to be careful. NetGalley reviewers are vicious sometimes. I'm just gonna jump to the emotional side. I can't share what I do it again without talking about the emotional side, so. <sighs> Where do I even start? There were some reviews that came in. I think I did kind of mention this in my reactions where they were like, they really enjoyed the book, but they only gave it three stars. So that was like such mixed messaging for me, but then it just got worse because then I would have the like five star, the world building is amazing. And then once, well, there wasn't a one star, I think it was two stars. I hated the world building. And again, that one person called it a textbook and I'm like, ouch, I was so just, like my brain just could not compute how one person hated it and the other person absolutely loved it. And I I have had this experience as an author before and it's confused me before, but I've never had such polar opposites and especially the negative side, I don't think I've ever had quite such vicious reviews from a few people because I don't think I've ever had my book compared to a textbook before. <laughs> it was funny but harsh. Now you can see I'm laughing at it because now I think it's really funny and I'm like emotionally removed from it. But to have people judging your book like that right before release day, I don't know if you remember watching um, this video where I kind of shared my feels right before release and I was down. I felt like I had been kicked in the gut. People were just trashing my book. People were loving it, but all I could hear was the trashing it side. And I think there's something about the human brain. I've heard this where we automatically hear negative things more than good things. You could have 10 good things, one negative thing, and you would go home thinking about about that negative thing. And it's the weirdest thing about the brain. I don't understand it, but I experienced it. <laughs> now that I'm on the other side, I have thicker skin. I'm past the release, which really, really helps because I was so anxious about it doing well and then it did great and I was thankful and I was like, okay, that's such a relief. Now I can take these reviews, no big deal, it's fine. I know who my target audience is and I am reaching them and the other people who don't even like books like mine don't matter. And it always reminds me of this review of Pride and Prejudice. It's like, it's just a bunch of people going to each other's houses. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's just so eye-opening. It's like, it might be for you and not for me. It might be for me and not for you. And that's fine. So it's not saying it's a bad book so much as saying it's just not for me. But then when the reviews actually say it's a bad book, even though you know it just means it's not for them, it's still, you're still hearing it's a bad book. So I can see why this is used more in Tradpub where you have the space and your publisher looks at the reviews because they don't care. They don't have an emotional attachment nearly as much as the author and they can just send you the good reviews and you don't have to look at the bad. You know what I mean? So that comes back to my 
last point, which is what I would do differently, I were to do neck alley again, which I think I would, but I would just be very, very, very careful to make sure I was only accepting my target readers. And on top of that, not just target readers, but the people who actually review and do good reviews on Neck Alley. And you know what's interesting is when you're going to approve a person, you can actually see what their average star rating is. And so I went back and looked and I was like, I approved people whose average star rating was two. Of course I'm gonna get a two. That's the average from that person. So if I wanted to get higher ratings, just being frank with you guys, I could have chosen people more willing to give out higher stars. Let me know if you would ever try Neck Galley as an author and if you think I should try it again myself in the future. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye. And all of a sudden it became reality